Are those birds enemies? Oh my god, they are. I wonder why they didn't decide to display EP anywhere on the screen. You gotta go into the menu to see how much EP you have. Like, there's plenty of room. They could have put it underneath the health or made a bar for it. Take this bird. I love the different viewpoints, like the fact that the birds are like closer to us. It's pretty cool. Scream at it. The different, like, foreground and background enemies that jump into... Jump in and out of the screen is cool. Faye. Yesterday you said your life was worthless. What did you mean by that? Why are you asking? Why? Yesterday you looked like you had a death wish. You think it wouldn't make me wonder? Say, how did you get stranded in this forest in the first place? I should ask you the same question. Huh? Well, I, uh... I ran away from my village. Or what's left of it. Village? You don't mean... Lahan. It was a small village that existed between this forest and the mountain range. I ran away from there. That village? It was a nice, peaceful village. Everyone there treated me like family. Then last night, a group of gears suddenly appeared and started fighting right in the middle of the place. The village was engulfed in flames. I couldn't just stand there and watch Lahan get be destroyed. So to try and save the villagers, I got in an empty gear without even knowing how to operate it. I just thought maybe I could do it. No, it was more like someone whispering to me. Someone whispering to me, telling me to do it. But it was a disaster. The village? Was it destroyed by the Kislev army? Fay? No, the village was destroyed by me. Yes, it was me. I destroyed Lahan. I'm sure of it. What do you mean you destroyed it? I thought you were trying to help save the villagers. I did try to help. I actually took out a few gears. But then I came under heavy fire from a new group of gears. And then my friend, Timothy, was hit by a hail of bullets. Then I lost it. Everything just went dark. I don't remember anything after that. The gear I was in went out of control. Well, that's what Doc said. When I came to the village and everyone in it was... Alice, she was such a... Alice and Timothy, oh god, everybody, all such good people. Went out of control, the gear, what about the village? Hey? Yes, the gear. They're still giving chase. We've entered Ava territory. I'm not giving up now. This gear's too important. That's done it! I'm at a disadvantage now. And Hooten, what's wrong? Respond! Shrapnel in my back. My thruster's output is dropping. I can't maintain altitude. Dang it, everyone land now. Regroup on the ground. We'll have to engage them. they had never come to the village, never started fighting there, that I wouldn't have tried to pilot that gear. It's all their fault, not mine. 
they're the ones to blame. If they'd never come, none of this would have. It's not for them. If not for them. 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 Enough of that. You're a coward. A coward? Me? Yes, you're a coward. All you're saying is them, them, them. Don't talk as if you had no part of the blame as well. I'm to blame? Yes, that's right. Of course, the direct cause of the battle was that a gear made an emergency landing in your village. But all Kislev wanted was the gear, right? They weren't invading or out to destroy Lahan. The real damage occurred because you climbed in a gear and tried to fight back. Whatever made you get into that gear? Not just anyone can pilot them, it takes training. There is no way a civilian could hope to pilot one. Besides, you should have been helping the villagers flee to safety instead. How could you blame the damage on a gear when it was your decision to fight in it in the first place? Why don't you take some of the responsibility yourself? Why are you putting all the blame on others? That's just running away. That's what makes you a coward. Well, if you put it that way, yes, that's right, I am a coward. I didn't realize my own strength and have been blaming what happened as a result of that on others. I mean, not, not really. <laughs> like, he, it's a weird conversation. I'm a pitiful excuse for a man, but I just felt this rush of blood in me and I couldn't help myself, couldn't help myself or help others. Faye, I'm, shut up, what do you know? When I came to, I was surrounded by piles of rubble. I didn't know what had happened or what I had done. I remembered absolutely nothing. All I knew was that my hands could still feel what they had done. The only things that penetrated the gear's barrier were screams. Screams accompanied by the stench of blood, the sound of crushing bones, and my own curses. Look, look at my hands. Can you hear their voices? Can you understand this feeling? The feeling of having destroyed your village with your own hands? Of not being able to do anything for the children left behind? Now they have nothing. I have nothing. I have nowhere. No one. I didn't want to get in it. I had no choice. There was no other way. Why did I go and say that to him? You talk as if it's not your responsibility. No. I didn't do anything. They died because you had to pilot the gear and start fighting. It wasn't me, can't you understand? Not just anyone can pilot those machines, you know. I didn't do it. Why won't you take responsibility? I'm not so strong. Why are you trying to put the blame on others? I'm not even all that talented. You're a coward! That's right. I'm a coward. Yes, that's right. I am a coward. Suddenly dinosaur. <laughs> what a sound effect. Oh my god, what? <laughs> That was such a good scream. Oh no! Man, what a crazy scene. So like, the reason I got confused halfway through is because Faye was like, saying, I'm worthless, I'm dumb, it's my fault, it's all my fault. And then, halfway through that conversation, he was like, you're right, I am a coward, I have been blaming everyone else. And I was like, wait, no you haven't. But I think Faye's just completely lost his mind at this point, and that's why like, he was willing to say, 
it's my fault, I did it, you know, I'm a loser, I'm an idiot. And then the second that she said, no, you're a coward, he just went with it. Like, he's so lost in the sauce now that, like, anything that anyone says to him, he's just like, you're right, you know? Like, he's just completely lost it. And that that's like, man, that's a hard thing to, like, pull off, honestly. But I feel like they did it so well. And then Ellie telling him he's a coward because she's trying to push down her feelings of herself. So she's projecting it. She's projecting her trauma onto Faye. And Faye is accepting it because he has nothing left. And he's just like, you know what? You're right. So, like, she's found this empty vessel that she can dump her trauma into. Like, man, that's crazy. Like, what a crazy scene. That's like... That's some real deep stuff, man. And I, I remember this game being really deep and thought-provoking. That's one of the things I do remember, but I didn't remember why. And, like, man, we're... How long? I mean, about three hours in? Uh, but really only more like an hour and a half in because I screwed around and have been going pretty slow. Um, we're already hitting these like really deep uh, discussions of like trauma and projecting it on other people and accepting other people's trauma because you're so down in the dumps so that you can't even like react, you know? Like, man, crazy. Um... Also, I heard, I, you guys were talking about the translation. I think the, it definitely has like 90s era JRPG translation issues, but I don't think it's that bad. Like, especially when the serious parts start to happen, I feel like it actually translates pretty well. Like, I think the serious dialogue sounds fine. It's, it's more of the casual dialogue that feels off or like just not very it feels kind of robotic but the serious dialogue still feels good like it still feels like they got the point of, like i haven't been confused by what they're trying to say at any point um so that's really all i ask all i ask is that it doesn't accidentally give us the wrong you know like i'm not getting the wrong information you know how's it going swiss good to see you this game is incredible um, you can go back to the the VOD to kind of see my explanation of it, but basically this game was going to be Final Fantasy VII, and then it was going to be Chrono Trigger 2, and then ended up being its own game, and then the, the devs that made this game split off of Square Enix and formed their own studio and started the Xenosaga series. So, it's uh, very ingrained in the history of Final Fantasy, Xenosaga, and Chrono Trigger games that we all, most of us know and love. So it's a very important game, I think. Ellie! Oh god. <laughs> I kind of expected her to still be standing there, but... She got wrecked. Ellie, are you all right? Darn, she's unconscious. <coughs> she's fine. One person translated this? Holy moly. That reminds me of that one woman that uh, ported Doom over to the, what was it, the Sega CD or whatever? I forget which one it was. Or maybe the Dreamcast. Uh, one, of the, one of the Doom ports was done by that one woman. And she has that interview where she talks about the experience and it's pretty interesting. In like a weekend, yeah. The Sega 32X, yeah. Which, I don't... I don't, uh... Envy anyone that had to put anything on the Sega 32X, let alone a port of Doom in a week. Sorry. 
Dude, Faye's strong, man. He can knock this whole dinosaur down <laughs> with every punch. What is it with JRPGs calling dinosaurs dragons? That's so common in these games. Faye! Faye, I have been searching for you. Here, you can use this. Hey, hold on a second. To tell me I can use it is one thing. <laughs> Ellie, dang it. Doc, I have a favor to ask. I will defeat this monster. But if it looks like I'll go out of control like last time, then shoot me. Faye, let us pray that that won't happen. Oh, I was right. It's robot time. Robot ninja time. Wait, what's the difference between booster and charge? Oh, I turned booster on. Okay. I'm wondering if booster means like more damage, more fuel or something. Oh, it's still only 30 fuel. Hmm. I like how he's doing more damage now. So it seems like the the gears don't have a combo system. Hey, are you all right? Yeah, I guess so. That fight with the Rancar was remarkable. An ordinary gear could not defeat that monster, and you certainly keep yourself in good shape. Why did you bring this here, Doc? This? You mean Weltall? Weltall? That is the gear that destroyed our village. Or this is the gear. Why did you bother bringing it here? I never want to see another gear again. I understand how you must feel. But in order to protect yourself, you need a certain degree of strength. Even more since we are being pursued. I agree that a certain degree of strength is needed for self-defense. And if it weren't for this gear here, Ellie and I'd be in that Rankar's stomach right now. But his power goes beyond what is necessary. Does one really need the power to destroy everything? I don't need that kind of power. I just hate gears. Faye, using power on being... Or being used by power. Is that not a problem of the heart? If humans do not use their power for wrong, it could be a good thing. I believe such power can help us. In that respect, I know you will be fine. It sure helped you out this time. Am I right? I want to believe that, but something is holding me back. This gear. Well, whatever. At least Ellie is safe now. Yeah, that girl trying to kill me. Thank God she's safe. She seems to have come too. Yo, thank you, Swiss. Huh? I am Satan, a friend of Faye's. You almost did not make it. If Faye had not have helped you, I hate to think what may have happened. But I was not too pleased with his rashness in trying to take on that Rancar with just his bare fists. 
Bare fists. Well, I'm glad that you were able to find a use for what I brought you. Let us just say we are borrowing that what the Kislev army left behind. Oh. Thank you, Faye. This makes twice. Don't mention it. I'll just put it on your tab. It is getting dark. Let us make camp now and start out early tomorrow. The both of you look tired and I need to make some repairs on our friend here. It is no use. The knee, actuator, and bypass circuit are both ruined. The actuator can be fixed, but the circuit needs to be replaced. Oh, having trouble sleeping there. Yeah. I imagine you would. You have had quite the day. This is the machine Faye used when the village was attacked. There was another machine left sti sitting on the outskirts of the village. Nilbayer Dar's Legus. It was yours, right? Just as I thought. The missing pilot from the gear that made an emergency landing in Lahan. And the mysterious woman found wandering lost in the forest are actually one and the same person. Judging from your uniform, I would also say you are with the military, am I correct? How... who are you? I checked the ID tags of the soldiers who died in the attack on Lahan. The design on their tags and the design on your uniform there is the same. Do not worry, they were given proper burials. But they may have not... they may not have been too pleased to die in a foreign land. Maybe. Does Faye know about you? I don't think he has realized yet. Most likely, Faye knows nothing of the world outside of Lahan. I see. So how come... In any case, it is best if we do not pry into each other's past anymore. But... Let's just say that I know a little more about the world than most do. <laughs> I love that he's like prying into her past, and then the second she says something about him, he's like, uh, best not to go there. Best not to talk about that stuff anymore. Anyway, Ellie, I have a favor I must beg you to do. What is it? Go straight ahead and you will come to a road. Then just keep going. Would you please leave us while Faye is still asleep? Unfortunate things keep happening around Faye. I would like to protect him if possible. I do not want him caught up in any vain struggles. I am also saying this for your benefit. Ellie, you do not belong here. Go back to your family. Um, I... Do not worry. I will not tell Faye what your true identity is. I will just tell him you went to meet up with your family. No, it is not that. I did something terrible to him. So, I want to apologize. Something terrible? Faye told me it was our fault your village was destroyed. Faye kept saying, if only they hadn't come. Then I called Faye a coward because he was trying to escape from the responsibility. But in fact, it was me who was trying to escape from taking the blame. If I hadn't crash landed there, they would all still be living peacefully now. All those innocent people wouldn't have been caught up in the tragedy. But I accused Faye. You are a rarity. I did not expect your people would ever think like that. To your people, surface dwellers are nothing more than domesticated animals, are they not? The shepherds, Abel, took control over the surface-dwelling lambs, possessing the right to give life and death unto them as they see fit. Exactly, yet you seem to feel responsibility toward Faye and the villagers. Why is that? I don't know myself. At Jugend, I was taught that surface-dwellers were stupid and base, and that is why we have to control them, but... But upon meeting Faye, something about him made you feel differently? Yes, he's no different than we are. In fact, he seemed more powerful. The song is a banger. He possesses something, something we don't. He also risked his life to save me. Twice. Most of your people would feel ashamed at receiving such an act. Yet, you are grateful to Faye? It's probably because of my father. He had an open mind to surface dwellers. My nanny was a surface dweller. No one knew about her, though. Besides, I am the same as Faye. The same? 
No, nothing. Never mind. Hmm, I think I understand. I am sorry. After just saying, we should not pry. It is my nature, you know? My wife says I am too persistent and that I talk too much. But personally, I do not think I talk too much. It is probably best if you return home to your country. You really should not be here. I'll return to headquarters, but then what? You are worried. Yes. Worrying is natural. Even I used to worry once too, you know? <laughs> I don't worry anymore. Oh, Satan. Anyway, let me handle what to tell Faye. You had better go now. Yugend. The J is a, is a Y. Yugend. Has Ellie gone yet? Oh, so you were awake? Yes, I woke up midway, so I only heard part of what you two were discussing. Ellie. So that's what she is. Faye, she is... I know. It's not Ellie's fault. What happened to the village is all my fault. I took out all my pent-up feelings on Ellie. I'm the one who should apologize. Faye, do not blame yourself. It was not your fault either. You were just trying to protect the village. Thanks, Doc. By the way, how is everyone from the village going? Do not worry. You was taking care of them. I told her to leave some... Leave soon and take them all to a certain place. They should be safe for a while. So you just worry about yourself for now. Okay, Doc. Now to think what we should do next. Shall we leave this forest and head for the desert town of Dazel? We may learn what Ava and Kislev are up to, not to mention getting some parts for Weltal. The leader of Ava is not going to sit back and let the other knight's fiasco go by unpunished. Yeah, I wonder, um, wonder what the, why there's such a German influence in the game. If there's like a reason or if they just, you know, chose German. Trying to think. I mean, I can't. I can't imagine there's like a very specific reason. Maybe they just decided on it. Yeah, I, you know, I never really thought about that, but come to think of it, there is a lot of German influence in Japanese media, isn't there? wonder why that is. Yeah, so Satan is a uh, monster. He's only level 6, too. He does have... No, he's just a monster. <laughs> His stats are almost as good, and he's two levels down. And he has double the health. And double the EP. Why does it give his weight? Kind of random. Yeah, I mean... Location has something to do with it. They're not... I mean... Not geographically, but like I would imagine Japanese culture and European culture are closer entwined than something like Japanese culture and like South American culture. Like even though even though the distance is similar or not South American, um, African culture. Like Africa and Europe are like somewhat the same distance. Europe would be a bit further away from Japan, but yet their cultures, I think, are a lot more entwined. Just because of, like, politics, I would imagine. But... Um... Well, that is interesting. I wonder... There's gotta be, like, a... There's gotta be, like, an actual reason. 
maybe World War II has something to do with it. Funnily enough, yeah. That's interesting. I never, I never would have made that connection in my head, but yeah. Hmm. So I never really realized, like, how much German influence there is in Japanese culture until you said it, but now that you said it, I'm thinking about all the different... I mean, you even have some in, like, Final Fantasy as well. Germany, Germany has a uh, pretty big animation, um, I don't know what to call it. They're, they're pretty big into animation. There's a lot of like, a lot of bootleg animation movies you can find are German. cartoons and so they're really big into cartoons as well I think it started with like political cartoons similar to America America was doing a lot of political cartoons back in World War II era and Germany did as well and then I think that kind of translated after the war into just regular cartoon animation that I would assume it is an aerial battleship from ABBA an aerial battleship I've never heard of ABBA having anything like that of course it does not come from ABBA originally most likely it belongs to the Gebler forces stationed in ABBA Gebler special forces from the sacred empire of Solaris known as Ge Gebler I am sure you have heard of something about them they are an organization providing large-scale military aid to the Kingdom of Abba. They showed up in Ignis several months ago. Until then, Abba was being routed by Kislev. But with Gebler's help, they have managed to regain half their losses. They are now expanding their territory and gathering resources buried in the ruins. I've heard the village elders talk about it. Is Ellie a part of that? Quite possibly so. Their group has superior technology and power. It is rumored they are here solely to get the resources in the ruins. I am surprised they are using something as powerful as that ship. It must be to suppress the recent border skirmishes. So they are fighting the Kislev Empire? Yes, it seems they have found new ruins on the northern edge of Abba. Those ruins are under a 500-year-old temple. Three weeks ago, Kislev took over those ruins. Most likely they are fighting over that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's one of the things... That's one of the only things I remember about this game is it gets really heavy. Which goes back to what we were saying before about it being too heavy for Final Fantasy, apparently. I don't think they were... They weren't bluffing. Mr. Sandman. This game is very special for many reasons. The, the history of its creation, how deep and serious it gets, 
its place in RPG culture. That's why I knew it was a really important one to play. And it was why it was the one I wanted to play after Phantathon. I think it fits very well. Alright, apparently I have 100 Senretsu. So, like, am I ready to learn it now, maybe? Do I have to, like, figure it out, though? That's what I'm wondering. Like, do I have to figure out the buttons for it? Or does it just unlock? Or, like, how's always, like, Legend of Ligaia, where I gotta, like, guess it? Or... I like how your character follows you, Final Fantasy VIII style. Party member. I talked about it earlier, Trouble, but basically this was going to be Final Fantasy VII at one point. And also Chrono Trigger 2 at one point. And then the studio ended up breaking off of Squaresoft and becoming Monolith Soft and starting the Xeno Saga series. Yeah, this is our new Let's Play. So, episodes go up Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, just like with Phantathon. And we'll be streaming it every Friday morning. Uh, no, I'm probably just going to make my own thumbnails for now on. I invested a lot of money into the Final Fantathon thumbnails. <laughs> I can't keep that up forever, but I thought Fantathon was important enough to have its own thumbnails, so I invested the money, but... Yeah, I agree, they're awesome. But, I mean, I made... I probably spent as much on those thumbnails as the series made in AdSense revenue. Obviously, everything else surrounding it, with, like, Twitch and everything, it was worth it, but... Like, in terms of AdSense revenue, I probably barely covered the thumbnail cost. One flare spire. I feel like I have to guess what it is. I mean, from what I've heard. It really was supposed to be Final Fantasy VII at one point, even to the point where they put an easter egg in both games. Like, Squaresoft was known for doing, like, several projects and then kind of, like, deciding where they go, but I think this one was pretty far in development as a Final Fantasy before being swapped over to its own IP. Sources, because that's just what I've read. I don't know what you've read. I'd be interested to hear it, though. What have I not tried? Triangle, triangle, square.
triangle, square, triangle. Square, triangle, triangle. Hey! Oh, that's not... So how did how did Satan learn something but Faye didn't What was that noise? Hmm. I mean, there's a chance that I need, like, more... more points before I can get it, maybe. Like, I need five points to learn it. What the? Are those land sharks? Oh my god! Okay. Satan does not mess around. Twisted! Think of the 11 month primer. Thank you very much for using your prime, man. Appreciate it. And Nitro, they give me the 32 months as well. Thank you. Hey, Death, I haven't been on Twitch in a long time, but I've been watching the Fantathon on YouTube. Congratulations on completing it. Can't wait to see what you have in store next. Thanks, man. see what happens. Let's go in Sharada. Yes, please don't please don't tell me how anything works. Should I go into Dazel? Yeah, why not? This is Dazel. Yes, that is right. The desert town of Dazel. Love the camera angles they use, man. This town's lively. This is the center for all excavations in Abba. People come from all over Ignis to try and find the resources buried in the ruins around here. We should be able to find out what both Abba and Kislev are up to here. And we also have to gather the things we need to repair Weltall. Repair Weltall. Yes, we must exchange the broken parts to fix Weltall. Otherwise, it will not be able to function at all. There's an ethos workshop in the southern part of this town. Let us go there, Faye. Yeah, okay, Doc. Let's check this place out then. <laughs> yeah, okay, Doc. Yeah, I'm so used to, like... RPGs of this time era just having like a static shot, right? And then like as you move it might move with you, but Having more of a static, you know Final Fantasy 7 esque having like a, a static So like I love all these unique camera angles like it especially during while they're talking We got like a nice like ground view and then I mean, it's just like really impressive Not to mention you can always turn the camera whenever you want, but just the um, the the details 
in like the angles when the characters are talking. It's really cool. Kane, thank you so much for the thousand bits. Hey Death, congratulations on completion of Fandathon. Sad to say I have fully succumbed to the fact that I can't stay subbed on Twitch as I never have time to renew my Prime or remember to. So to that, I'll continue to be one of your number one lurkers on YouTube. The community is amazing. You're amazing. I wish I had more time to chat with you guys. Anyway, happy super early John Day as well, as I'll probably forget that I hope to make the after party. Thank you, Kane. Appreciate it, man. Don't ever feel like you are obligated to do anything, man. I appreciate it. Any and all support you throw my way, or just even being here from time to time. That's more than enough, man. Hmm, you look tired. You can stay overnight at the bar, so why don't you rest there for a little bit? Traveling all worn and tired might just get you killed. I'm gonna fix. The generator sensor is broken. It's the only thing that can sense buried gear generators. Without that, I'm ruined. Ah, get it? Ruined? So, what do you want to buy? I love that they're, like, surrounded by tires. It's hard to read those numbers. Looks like the martial wear is... better for both of them. I mean, it's really cheap. Might as well. Or maybe I'm just rich. I got played. The martial wear is worse. There's a big pause between getting out of the menu and getting back to the gameplay. But honestly, the rest of the game is so impressive that I'm not really bothered by it. Okay, so blue... But wait, these are cheaper, though. I'm so confused. I thought for sure that two would be... Like, blue two would be bad. And red two would be good, but this is more expensive. So I thought like, okay, the blue two is actually plus two. a separate okay that's why let me keep it with this because it gives you yeah it, it is a separate equipment that's why I thought they were the same equipment because they're both caps or I guess no they're not One's wear and one's cap, I just can't read. Fair enough. of gear parts of the warehouse. I'm gonna have to order more from the Ethos headquarters. I haven't seen you around here before. Don't think that if you cause trouble, you'll get away with it. We're Ava Army Guards. Remember that. If requests for repairs keep coming at this pace, we won't be able to keep up. We should ask the Ethos headquarters to expand this workshop. I'll have to ask the Ethos headquarters to send a mechanic that can repair army gears. Hey, thanks, Swiss. Have a great Easter. Water is needed for the maintenance of gears, so our waterworks were also built to provide a steady supply of water to the workshop. This is 
is the waterworks. All of Dazel's water comes from this pump. And this song is so lively. I love the use of lyrics. They really went all out with the voice acting in the cutscenes and then the lyrics in the songs. Huh? That's amazing. They're doing digging right next to this town too? This is an Avaron excavation site. The machines and gears found here are valuable resources that could turn the tide of the war. They're indis indispensable to the war effort. Anyway, Faye, let us move on. We have more pressing matters to do than talking in the, taking in the sights. The sights, ha! Everyone loves puns here. I wonder why no one's questioned yet why gears are buried in ruined sites. Like, is it just kind of something that they've all come to terms with? Like, even though they don't know the reason, they're just kind of like, it's so commonplace now that people don't even question it. Because, like, yeah, why would we find futuristic robots in the ground? <laughs> that's a... That's a meandering question that eventually needs to be answered. Yeah, we did it. Who would have thought it? This sure is a noisy place. Well, in a place like this, you have to expect this kind of atmosphere. Yeah, but even so. Shut up. Why are y'all yapping when Big Joe is here trying to drink in peace? Can't y'all shut up? This dude looks like a One Piece character or something. He's so, like, exaggerated. He has, like, such an exaggerated face. I love it. Who do you think you are? I don't care if you're Big Joe or Big Schmo. You don't mess with me. Gahaha. ha ha Yeah, you sure talk big. Can you dig for treasure as good as you talk? What's that, you say? You're so tough. Always looking for junk laying around. Why don't you do something more productive for once? If you ask me, you're a big... Hey, stop it. This guy's trouble. He's looking wild. Ah, shut up. Just shut your trap. Gaha, that's right. Run home to mama, little boys. Whoop. Dang you, you'll keep. You'll keep? What does that mean? Ah, cowardly little punks. Why, this man sure likes to make his presence felt. You drinking too? Booze is my life companion, especially in a sucky world like this. Everyone's searching for dough and dynamite. How unromantic. <laughs> Gotta love that 90s humor. That 90s dialogue. <laughs> What's this game rated? T? Yeah, not surprised. wonder what it actually says. Mild language, animated blood, suggestive themes. All right. I think this is a good place to stop because we'll probably get into stuff in the city here. Fixing the gear and whatnot. There are multiple instances of butt. That's actually kind of funny that there's no, like, uh, partial nudity or anything. Like, the very first cutscene has partial nudity and it's not even on the thing. Pretty interesting. I mean, it's just, it was a different time, man. 
This was the Greatest Hits version, too. So this was a re-release. The, the late 90s were a different time, man. <laughs> it's very different nowadays. Oh, for sure. But, I mean, nowadays, I see partial nudity on labels of games that don't have anywhere near that. I mean, like, just, like, flashy, you know, flashy costumes is, like, partial nudity at this point. I mean, I think, like, uh, I'm trying to think of a good example, but, like, some of the anime games that just have, like, you know, skimpy outfits, that's getting a partial nudity on the back. Um, so, yeah. No, that would definitely get... <laughs> that would definitely get something on the back. Maybe not M-rated, but definitely get something on the back of the box for that. This is a different time. Anyways, that'll be it for our first day of Let's Play Xenu Gears. I want to personally thank everyone for being here. It means a lot to me. Um, I am really, really excited for this game, as well as just returning to Let's Plays of old RPGs. Um, there's so many great games for us to explore. I have an entire huge list of games that everyone has been asking for for a very long time. Games like Sukuden and Lunar Silver Story and Lost Odyssey and Infinite Undiscovery and Xenosaga and all sorts of just amazing RPGs that we can delve into in the Let's Play format and play over a long period of time so we can really talk and discuss the games. Um, so I'm just very, very excited for that. But this one was special, man. I knew that this one had to be the first game we played after Fantathon, both for like its historical value and also just how much it means to the people that love it. And I can completely understand why with how deep the dialogue goes, with how deep the themes go right off the bat. I know we're in for a very emotional and epic journey here. And uh, I can 100% understand why a lot of people say this is their favorite game um, and why it means so much to people. So I hope to do it justice. I hope you enjoyed the first couple of episodes and I am excited to play more. And we'll see you in the next episodes of Let's Play Xenogears. We'll see you there. Peace.